The best day of your life, the best day of your life is the one on which you decide your life is your own. No apologies, no excuses, no one to lean on, rely on or blame. The gift is yours and you alone are responsible for the quality of it. Friends, once upon a time, don't we all love to hear that phrase? Once upon a time in a small town in India, in the post-partition India in the early 1950s, there lived a prosperous and self-made businessman named Dhanaraj. For those of you who might not be familiar, most Indian names have a meaning. Dhanaraj meant the king of wealth. And by amassing a fortune, this man had certainly lived up to his name. However, the same couldn't be said about his only son, whom he had fondly named Gaurav, meaning someone who earns a lot of respect and fame for the family. Gaurav was pampered and spoiled and had managed to become very good at wasting his father's hard-earned fortune. He would while away his days with his friends, who enjoyed piggybacking on his spending sprees while his father worked hard day in and day out to grow the family business and to provide for all of them. Dhanaraj obviously was a very worried man. He had devoted his entire life to accumulating wealth so that his son could prosper. However, his son had zero respect for what his father had been through to provide for his luxurious lifestyle. Dhanaraj could foresee that if his son didn't mend his ways, the future would be disastrous. He had tried everything, but nothing made an impact on, on his son. Counseling by village elders, seers and fakirs had all failed. There seemed to be no hope for Gaurav. Then one day, Dhanraj had a clever idea to teach his son a lesson. He called his son early in the morning and said, Son, we need to sit down and talk. Gaurav had never seen this look in his father's eyes before. He said, what's the matter, father? I think it's high time you start supporting yourself, son, and understand the value of money. Today onwards, I want you to earn one rupee a day or forget all the facilities that you enjoy. <laughs> that should be easy, Gaurav chuckled to himself. He didn't give it much attention and in the afternoon went straight to his mother to request a rupee. He knew how to emotionally blackmail his mother and managed to get the money from her. In the evening, when he met his father, he asked him, how, how did the day go? Did you earn the one rupee on your own today? He asked. Yes, father, I did, said Gaurav with fake confidence of someone who was lying. Then Raj put his arm around his son and said, really? You managed to earn that one rupee on your own? That's great, son. Let's go for a walk. His father took him towards an old well near their palatial home. When they got near the well, Dhanraj took the one rupee from Gaurav and threw it into the well. Gaurav didn't react. His father now looked straight in his eyes and asked, You didn't earn it, did you? Tell me, who gave it to you? After some time, Gaurav confessed that it was his mother who helped him. I'll give you another chance, son. I'll give you another chance. Earn one rupee tomorrow on your own or be prepared to lose the luxurious lifestyle that you lead on my expenses. Later that day, Dhanraj requested his wife not to help Gaurav with the money on returning home. The following day, instead of looking for work, Gaurav started thinking about who could give him the one rupee today. This was the mindset of a person who was not used to working hard. Instead of finding an opportunity to earn that one rupee, he started thinking about who could be the person who could lend him the money today? This time he went to his sister and pleaded that if she didn't help him, their father would definitely throw him out of the house. She too relented and gave him a rupee. Later that night, when he told his father that he had earned the money, they went for a walk again. <laughs> then Raj took the one rupee from his son and threw it into the well like the day before. Gaurav had sort of expected it. He, he thought it was some sort of a weird ritual his father was following and he didn't react much. The father knew once again what was going on and he asked him, who did you manage to blackmail today? Because I'm sure you haven't earned this money. It's your sister, isn't it? Tanraj said in a very stern tone, 
Gaurav nodded and confessed to having taken the money from his sister. Angry and determined, the next morning Dhanraj closed all available options to Gaurav to borrow money from anyone. As the day progressed, Gaurav grew anxious and started looking for work. He thought people would welcome him, give him work because they knew his father, because he was an influential man. But it didn't turn out that way. He didn't have any real skills, he disliked manual labor and had a bad attitude. Nobody wanted him. Disappointed and distraught with the reality, Gaurav was just spending time across the town and finally when he reached the railway station, that's where he saw a porter lifting heavy luggage and getting paid for it. This was a ray of hope for him. He rushed to the next passenger, offered to carry her luggage, and thus earned his first 10 paise, equivalent of about, if you talk in dollar terms, at 10 cents. This is how he earned his first 10 paise, the one-tenth of his target for that day. By the evening, his back hurt due to the effort, and there were blisters on his hands. But he managed to earn the one rupee with his own labor that he had promised his father. There was a different spark in his eyes today when he entered the home, and Dhanaraj could notice the difference. So, how did the day go, son? Father, today I earned the one rupee on my own, replied Gaurav. Well, we'll find out, son. Let's go for a walk. Gaurav knew what was coming next. As they approached the well, he was becoming increasingly uncomfortable. His heart was pounding in his breast, and he was sweating profusely. Dhanaraj took the coin from his son, and as he was about to throw it into the well, Gaurav pleaded with him and said, Please don't throw it into the well. Why not? asked Dhanraj. Because, father, I've earned it. That's what you said the day before and yesterday. I'm not lying, father. I swear, I was at the railway station all day carrying people's luggage. Look at these blisters on my hands. You have no idea what I've been through to earn this money. Please don't throw it into the well. Dhanraj smiled. He put the coin back in his son's pocket. And he hugged him. I'm so proud of you, son. I'm so proud of you, he sighed. Now I can die a peaceful man because you have understood what it takes to support yourself. This, my friends, was Gaurav's transformational moment as he realized that he had been taking the hard work of his father and all the facilities that he had for granted. He repented and assured Dhanaraj about working hard and mending his ways. Now that the son had learned the basics, Dhanaraj started involving Gaurav in the family business and taught him all the finer nuances of trade and commerce. Over a period of time, he turned out to be a hardworking and successful businessman who valued self-reliance and the dignity of labor. Now he was indeed the Gaurav, the pride of his family. Friends, I earned my first salary when I was a hotel management student at IHM Chandigarh. 300 rupees for the day. 300 rupees to work as a server, a waiter at outdoor caterings, which are called ODC in hotel management uh, terms. Now, I didn't have to do this and earn the money, but I chose to. I didn't want to miss out on all the fun my classmates had at all these exhibitions and weddings and corporate events. Some of you may also be familiar with my Sydney car wash job story. Again, I didn't have to uh, do that either, but I chose to. And that made all the difference in the long run. I'd love to hear in the comments how you felt when you earned your first salary or your first wages. Let me know in the comments. To every young person watching this video, I hope you don't have to. I hope you don't have to do odd jobs, part-time work, internship, etc. But I hope you choose to. I hope you choose to, even if it's for a short time. Because what you will learn in the process, my friends, is not taught at any university in the world. What you will taste is not served at any restaurant in the world. You will taste self-reliance, which is the foundation of self-confidence, self-assurance, and long-term success. And to all my young friends, I want you to taste this power of self-reliance as soon as you can, as early as you can. So get a part-time job, 
do some freelance work, intern somewhere. There are a lot of opportunities to make money and I want you to use them, not because you have to, but because you choose to. It's the things we choose to do that make all the difference. To every parent who's watching this video, if you have the means, and if you're putting everything on the platter for the puttar, you're doing them a disservice. You're snuffing out their inner flame, their hunger for achievement. Na sangharsh, na takleef, to kya maza hai jeene mein? Na sangharsh, na takleef, to kya maza hai jeene mein? Bade bade tufaan tham jate hain, jab aag lagi ho sine mein. Bade bade tufaan tham jate hain, jab aag lagi ho sine mein. I'll leave you with this quote from Bob Moab, who wrote, The best day of your life, the best day of your life is the one on which you decide your life is your own. No apologies, no excuses, no one to lean on, rely on or blame. The gift is yours and you alone are responsible for the quality of it. I think this is worth repeating. The gift of life is yours and you alone are responsible for the quality of it. This is the day your life really begins. This is the day your life really begins. Bob Mowat. Thanks for tuning in.